So inertia is the amount of resistance the body poses to motion. That's a nice way to think about it. So Actually, change in motion. Change in because, motion. You're correct. Yeah, change you, in motion. There's you're no correct. there's no resistance to just motion. Absolutely, itself. you're correct. You're correct. So for what that means is a heavier box is harder to move than a lighter box. Mm-hmm. It's the easiest way to think about it, right? So a heavier mm-hmm. box inherently has more inertia than a lighter box. And therefore, if a heavier box was, let's say, coming at you like a huge, like a huge box was like coming at you, you'd probably get trampled by it. But if a small one was coming at you, you can probably stop it. So it depends amount, how fast it's okay, going. Depends, okay, <laughs> yes, you're right. You're very right. Speed is also a very important component. It's actually mass and velocity that becomes a very important component in measuring how hard or the resistance well, to the change in motion. Basically, we're also going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about momentum, momentum very shortly. Exactly. But yeah. Exactly. So that's basically a way to measure it. But I did I did want to just touch on inertia because it is an in, it's an interesting concept. Mm-hmm. So like the idea behind inertia is like there's an inertia of rest and inertia of motion. Mm-hmm. So inertia of rest is basically an object is at rest. So how much force or what would you need to do to change its motion so to make it start moving? Inertia of motion is when an object is already in motion and you need to stop it. How much force would you need to apply to stop it? So they're just two different ways to think about. And again, all of this derives from, you know, the original first law of motion where all can be applied. Technically, those are both the same thing. Yeah, because no, no, they are. It's it's the same thing. I'm just describing it in two different ways, right? Like when a body's at rest and in motion. But imagine this in one frame you're in the in your frame of reference the box is moving Mm. and so you say oh the box has a an inertia of motion or whatever you called it and i need Mm -hmm. to stop that box Mm -hmm. but then in the frame of the box you're the one that's coming towards the box and you're putting it in motion yeah Yeah. and so little little touch on inertial frames there i was also Um, gonna say yeah that's also a big thing to make this to make the similarity so the reason the inertia of rest and inertia of motion are the same thing is because speaking from a like a relativistic perspective like frames of reference being in motion at constant velocity and being at rest are the same thing the same it's the exact same thing Mm-hmm. And that's one of the consequences of, you know, understanding inertial frames. So that's mm-hmm. why for a frame to be inertial, it must be traveling at constant velocity. It mm-hmm. cannot be accelerating. Yeah. So that's and also so something we can, yeah. The the thought experiment that I always love to talk about is, uh, you know, you have, imagine a universe that is just completely empty. Mm. And then you have two people. All of a sudden, you see, you know, they're both going at a constant velocity and uh, they cross each other, right? And so from the perspective of guy number one, Mm -hmm. there's someone out in deep space that is coming towards them and then passes them and then keeps going the other way. From the perspective of guy number two, the exact same thing happens except from the other way. way. But now from from God's perspective, right? From a third person view, you just see two people coming towards each other and crossing each other. So it's kind of like which frame is the right frame? There is no right frame, right? There's no it, right frame. Exactly. Like, exactly. You could you There's could no be right tracking frame. you could be tracking any point in the universe at a constant velocity, and the physics will always work out, no matter what. And mm-hmm. that's why it's so beautiful. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, because the physics, out. the physics, the exact same physics can be applied to an object at rest mm-hmm. than to an object in motion. Like the that's ideas right behind you know looking at them at rest and looking at them at motion is the basically the same thing and then that's a very fundamental concept because that basically relates to how well, like what we perceive as force right because when you say the net force on an object is zero that could mean two things right that can mean it's at rest or it's at it's in constant motion and the fact that that's what that means is what kind of points us in the direction to the fact that they're the same thing because the net force is zero in both of these situations, they must be very similar situations. And that's kind of like one thing that we can conclude from the first law.